In this video, I'm going to give you the fastest way to break into the tech industry and actually land a job. Now, in 2024, looking for a tech job sort of feels like dating as the average guy. It feels impossible to get anyone to give you a chance and there's a few guys at the top getting all the opportunities. Now, that might sound disheartening to you, but let me just tell you why that can actually be encouraging. The thing is, the reason why 90% of people fail when it comes to dating or looking for a tech job is not because they're just not born the right person or whatever, but it's because they simply haven't developed the right characteristics yet to be what employers are looking for. I have landed jobs at some of the biggest companies in the world, and this was after hundreds and hundreds of hours of trial and error of figuring out what works, what doesn't work. In this video, I'm just going to give you everything that you need to know so you don't need to go through these hundreds of hours and wait your time as well. What might surprise you is that these steps are actually not that complicated. It's just that most people don't know about these things, so they just randomly throw their resume around without realizing that they're actually just doing everything completely wrong. And if they just did a couple of very simple changes, everything could be different for them. So that's your first step. Everything starts with simply building your programming skill stack. So what do I mean by skill stack? Well, as a programmer, there's obviously a lot of things that you could be learning, like different programming languages, different frameworks, and different skills are more in demand than others. And also different skills sort of work well together with other skills. So you want to be aware of in this day and age, what skills are companies actually looking for? So the way you would do this from first principles is literally go on like LinkedIn, for example, and you can look for software engineer jobs or programming jobs or whatever, and just search for jobs based on different keywords like Django, Python, JavaScript, and see which technologies have the most demand, aka which one of them have the highest number of job postings. Now, this is going to be the most surefire way to find exactly what is most in demand in your area. But if you want a general idea, usually learning something like full stack development using languages like Python or JavaScript or Go is going to be a good bet in almost any area. After you have done that, what I would do is just pick one programming language and learn the programming foundations using that language, aka you simply learn the basics of what is a loop, what are variables, how does the general programming logic work? And after that, you want to pick a specialization, aka you want to pick, do I want to specialize in the front end, in the back end, in DevOps or whatever. So once you have chosen your in-demand programming skill stack, you just want to focus on this one skill stack. Of course, you can go out and learn a bunch of things, but the most efficient way is just to get really good at one thing rather than spreading your attention into many different things. I made this mistake myself when I was first learning the code because I was so excited about all these different kinds of programming. I was learning mobile development, AI, all this kind of stuff. But really, if I wanted to be as efficient as possible and get a job as fast as possible, I should have just pick one thing and really get good at that one thing. Before we go into the next four steps, which you can obviously just go out there and implement on your own based on this video. I want to talk about a program called Course Careers, which is essentially designed to take you through all of these steps and essentially do a lot of this stuff for you, like help you land a job directly rather than having to do all of this manually. How do they do this? Well, it has a couple of components. First of all, we're going to go through is a full software engineering online curriculum. That's a lot more practical than even a computer science degree or something like that. You're going to learn programming fundamentals, which is taught by Tech Tim. And then after that, you can choose a specialization based on what you're interested in, like front end DevOps, back end. So this is going to give you the first step. It's going to give you all the in-demand skills that you actually need. But alongside this, you get support of mentors. So these are people who have actually done what you want to do, who work software engineering jobs, who will help you hand in hand. But what really makes Course Career special is that they have essentially provided this full platform. And this is not guaranteed or anything, but you will be able to land a job directly via their platform. So how can they do this, you might ask? Well, they have created what's called the employer platform. They reach out to companies and they pitch them like, hey, we have these top candidates who we have taught with our curriculum. You can come to us and we will provide you with top candidates so you don't need to spend time searching for great candidates, which is why people like Max, for example, managed to land a 70K software engineering job after just 12 weeks of going through course careers directly via course careers without applying for a single job themselves. So if you're interested in course careers, they've actually provided a free software engineering fundamentals course that you can go and do right now down below in the description. And after you go through that, you can decide if the program is right for you. So if you're interested in that, go check that free course down below in the description. And thank you for course careers for partnering with me on this video. With that said, let's talk about what the next step is. And that is going to be to build a complex 
project. Now, most people think that it's enough to just learn programming, but that's really not enough because if you don't have a computer science degree, or even if you do, what companies are really going to be looking at is, can you actually know how to code? And you just telling them like, oh, I know how to code. That's not going to be enough. You need some kind of proof. How do you give this proof if you don't have any experience? Well, what you can do is simply give yourself experience by building complex software engineering projects with these skills that you're learning, for example, through course careers, or even if you're not doing course careers, however you're learning them. What you then want to do is apply these skills into some real piece of software that you're building. I cannot stress how important this is. It's not even just about building something to show your skills. This is actually also where you're going to become a really good programmer. Because when it comes to learning to code, you can't just learn it by studying it or like reading it from books or watching dumb videos like this. What you need to do is actually put your skills into practice. That is when you actually learn how to actually code something real. So what you want to do is pick something that you really want to build that's a lot more complex than you probably think you can build and then just start going through it step by step like one little step at a time you start building up this complex project and that is going to be your portfolio project your resume project you can build a couple of these that are slightly simpler or you can just build one super complex one the key here is that you want to build something that is easy to understand that combines multiple pieces of software engineering together in whatever area in your skill stack there that you have chosen and then after that you're going to put that into your resume which brings us to our third step but this is again something that's going to sound very obvious like oh have a good resume but i think you'd be surprised how few people understand actually how to make a proper resume so if one of my previous jobs i was working for a really big company but because it was a very small office within that company i as an intern was actually tasked with the task of going through the resumes of people who had sent their applications basically for like an internship position at this company and i was going through these resumes one after the other the other and I was shocked how terrible 95% of these resumes are. Like, it's like they didn't even bother to do the very basics right. Now, obviously, they were obvious to me because I had gone through like hundreds of revisions. Like, so many people had reviewed my resume. I've read literal books about how to make a resume. Like, it's a pretty deep concept. But I'm just going to give you the couple of basics. That if you just do these things, you're already going to be ahead of like 95% of people. And by the way, if you go through course careers, which I mentioned before, they are actually going to have a... Like, like a template inside of their platform where you just fill in a couple of details. The course careers software is essentially just going to spit out a PDF resume for you that is already fully optimized, that is already like the perfect template and everything like that. But if you don't want to do that, then here are the couple of basics you want to be aware of. First of all, you just want to have the basic sections right. You want to have your personal information. You want to have whatever technical experience you have that is in any way relevant to technology. And then most importantly, you want to have a section for the technical projects that you have built. You want to put all of that in the resume in order of relevance. Let's say you have no technical experience. You just put your projects at the top because that is going to be the most relevant thing that you're done. The next thing is just formatting, just proper formatting. Like most resumes that you see look like this or this. This is just absolutely terrible to read. Like when I see a resume like this, I don't even want to read it. Literally just go on Google, look at proper resume templates, either Canva or Google Docs or whatever. Just pick one of those. Don't try to make one on your own. It has to be something where you're not just filling it with text. Like you need to understand when a recruiter looks at a resume, they don't have too long to look at a resume. I think on average, they like look at it for three seconds or something like that. You want to have white space. You want to be as efficient as possible with everything that you're putting on the resume. The way you do that is with the third tip, use action verbs. You don't want to start your bullet point saying something like, oh, I was responsible for blah, blah, blah. You want to say what you did, meaning you implemented, programmed, built these action verbs stating exactly what you have done that is what you want to start every single bullet point with because that like shows that you have actually contributed something to the companies that you worked at or the projects that you built or whatever if you just do those things you're honestly going to be above like 95 percent of people when it comes to resumes so with that out of the way let's move on to step number four which is to apply for jobs properly so when most people apply for jobs what do they do well they just apply online they spend 30 minutes filling out some dumb application form for some stupid company that's not even going to look at your application and they do that over and over and over and over and over and i made this mistake when i was applying for jobs for myself i would just like grind sending application up application up application i was sending like hundreds of applications and i was wondering oh why is no one getting back to me but well, the reality was that these companies get so many applications that even if you have the best application in the world there's probably a pretty low chance that they're ever even going to read your application because they'll just go through them they'll see like 200 and some recruiters looking at 
I don't want to read through all of these. As soon as they get to one that's sort of good, they just invite them for an interview. They don't even look through all of them. So essentially what you want to do is find a way to essentially bypass the application system, apply for jobs in a lot more efficient way. So how do you do this? Well, the easiest way, of course, is again, shameless plug. If you use course careers via their platform, you might be able to actually get course careers to connect you with companies directly. Again, not a guarantee or anything, but it can happen if you do really well. But if you don't do that, there are two main ways that are a lot more effective and both of them are essentially about like finding a way to reach out to the actual humans at these companies who make the decisions about hiring. For example, when I worked for one of the big companies that I worked for before, what we would always get is people on LinkedIn or email reaching out to us just for a coffee because they just wanted to learn about our jobs. They just wanted to make themselves the best candidate. And you'd be surprised how willing we were always to do that. And this is actually a very good strategy from the applicant's perspective. Why? Because it gives a human connection that you have at these actual companies. Even if you're not speaking with the direct person in charge of hiring or anything like that, what will happen is that inside of these companies, they have these referral scheme. So if I work in for a company, refer someone who ends up getting a job at my company, I'm going to get some kind of a bonus. So I'm almost incentivized to help you land a job at my company if you reach out to me for a coffee or something like that. And the recruiters will be happy about that because that means they don't have to go and read through all of these stupid online applications because they don't actually want to do that. So that's the first way. Reach out to people who actually work at the companies that you want to work at and just genuinely be interested in them, make a human connection. The other way is to just attend networking events. Other of these companies are going to have networking events where you're going to go and meet, make these human connections over there. Or you can reach out to even recruiters directly. And you don't want to reach out from the perspective of, oh, can you please give me a job? You want to reach out from the perspective of, hey, I saw you work at this company. I'm really interested in it. I'd like to learn more about the job, see if I might be the right fit. Just approach him from the perspective of, I want to learn about your job. I want to learn about the company so that I could become the best candidate that you want. Your last step is going to be to pass the actual interview, of course, which means that you want to master interview skills. It's not enough to just be a good programmer, to even have a good resume, things like this. If you don't know how to play the game of interviews and actually pass these interviews consistently. Now, again, this might sound scary to you. Programming interviews are not fun. They're kind of intimidating, even for me these days. But again, it's just a skill that you can learn. So how do you do this? Well, there's two kinds of interviews broadly that tech company is going to have. One is sort of the more practical interview where they might for example, ask you to build something on the spot or they might give you like a take home assignment or something like that to see if you can actually physically build something with the technologies that they use. Smaller companies will usually have interviews like this. And then you have the dreaded lead code style sort of coding problem interview where it's very common at the big companies like Google, Facebook and things like this. But this, luckily for you, is a very sort of proven roadmap and like step by step path that you can just learn all the problem solving skills and the data structures and algorithms topic that they actually test in these interviews. So the simple way to do this is you to learn what you need to learn and then you learn all those topics. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how do I learn these topics? How do I know what to learn? Well, that is exactly why I actually made this video where I go through all of the steps that you will need to go through to master data structures and algorithms, which are the exact topics that companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, etc., test in their interviews. So if you watch this video and then you learn all of this in this video, you're going to be absolutely unstoppable and you are going to be able to land any job that you want. If you don't think you can do it, just know that you can always learn it. So go watch that video next. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like. I'll see you in the next one.